Hey, this is Peter again with Seven Bridges. As you know, I'm one of the men of the discipleship program, and uh, we've got a powerful exhortation for you from our brother Patrick. Patrick has been a pillar in my walk here. Uh, he's got a lot of wisdom, and he religiously gets up at 4 a.m. every day to get in that Bible, to study, and really puts it to application in his life and walks it out. So I hope you enjoy his exhortation. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And um, what we're going to do first is we're going to pray. Amen. Okay. Lord, give me the strength to deliver a message of hope and inspiration to everybody here at the Garden who I love so dearly. Jesus, thank you for a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you for my freedom. Thank you for the turkey. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the turkey soup. Thank you for everything that you do for me. Thank you, everything. Thank you for everything that you do for the children at the garden. Thank you for all these Christmas trees around here. All of them. I mean all of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. I'm going to say this before I start on my excitation, because um, I wrote this a little while ago, because when I do my excitations, I don't just do them to bring to you, I kind of work on them, because what basically, what basically I'm trying to do is learn how to put forth action not just learn the scriptures. I want to be able to apply. Example, we do a corporate prayer every morning. Okay, we do that prayer, and it's beautiful. Devil ain't in here. I believe the spiritual warfare starts as soon as we say amen, and we go out that door right there. That's when that prayer, and everything that we talk about, and everything that pastor says, it's time to put forth action. It's cool, I mean, it's good to know it, but I wanna be one to apply. You know, I can't be a soldier for Christ if I don't even know what Christ is. I can't give you something I don't have. I can't apply something that I don't even understand myself. So with this excitation that I have, it is basically the Holy Spirit working through me. Okay. All right, today, today my excitation will be on faithfulness. Faithfulness. I feel as if I continue to focus on faithfulness and studying God's word and following his advice on what I learned. All the other fruits of the Spirit will be embedded in my heart. If I read the Bible every day and keep my focus on him, the knowledge and also the understanding of what each one of the nine fruit of the spirits mean to me will be revealed to me. First off, let's talk about the total purpose of the Bible. Turn to 2 Timothy, Timothy 3.16. Everyone there? Okay. Verse 16. You ready? I hear Steel Hill Pages. Oh, I forgot. Oh, 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay. All righty. All the scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible states that the scriptures in the, wait a minute, the Bible states that the scriptures in the Bible are given by inspiration of God, meaning that this is God's commandments and his words to us for correction, meaning that when wherever in life I have made mistakes or sin, I can receive guidance from the Bible in the correction of this matter. For instructions in righteousness meaning that God's word will give me a flat-out blueprint 
on how to walk in his grace. That man of God may be complete, meaning that Patrick will have all the armor that I need to practice good works in my life daily as I walk in Christ, even when times are tough. I will be able to practice good works. I believe this is the complete purpose of the scriptures and the Bible. Basically, the Bible is the answer to all my questions concerning God. Someone asked another person the other day, how can you explain the Bible and know the scriptures so well? He told them the same thing he told me. Get up early, read your Bible, study it, meditate on it, make it the total focus of my life, and then God will reveal the scriptures and the meaning of the verses to me. Look at it this way. If you want to learn how to drive a car, I have to study the book at the DMV. If I want to learn how to do anything on this earth, society has a book for it. So God has got a book out also on how to find love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against there is no law, meaning nothing can cause me to fall. I might stumble, but I won't fall down. And if I do, there's also instructions in the Bible on how to get back up. I don't know about you, but all the books in the world, I don't know about you, but out of all the books in the world, the Bible is and always be the number one bestseller. Ironically, this book is given out for free all over the world. But there's a catch. I gotta be willing to pick it up and follow. The next thing I need to do is be careful of my comprehensions of the Bible. Turn to Deuteronomy 12, 32. Okay. Yeah, Deuteronomy 12, verse 32. Okay, everyone there? Okay. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take any take away from it. This verse in the Bible basically explains itself. What this means is I should be very careful of how I interpret what I read in the Bible. I can't add extra words to the verses or delete certain parts of the scriptures just so they can fit circumstances or give me a reason to do certain things. Turn to Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. Matthew 22, chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. Okay, verse 37. Everyone there? Yes. Okay. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. These are the two greatest commandments which God asked of us to follow. They are simple. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That means I shall put him first above everything and everyone. The second is simple or similar to it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Neighbor does not mean that I'm supposed to love only the person that stay next door to me. Everyone else, I treat like trash, run over them, use them, etc. Neighbor means that I'm supposed to love everyone on this earth. Or else, love everyone enough to profess Jesus Christ and the glory of God in my life by my words and actions. Do not add or take things from the scriptures. If I don't understand something or I'm confused about a word, I need to go and talk to someone as soon as possible. I believe that, I believe that a lot of the reason why there is so much violence in the country today, such as airport bombings, the World Trade Center, etc., is because someone has taken parts of the Bible, read it, changed it, or misunderstood it. Now they call themselves following it like an idiot. When they should have just paused for three seconds, as Pastor would say, go and find someone like Charles or Pastor Chris and ask them what something means. The 
the world would be a better place. Turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Exodus chapter 20, verse 24. Okay. Yes, 24. Yeah, 20, 24. Okay, everyone got it? Okay. Verse 24. An altar of earth you shall make for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offering and your peace offering, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. In this scripture, it states that I will sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings such as sheep and oxen. What this means is that I should come to God and sacrifice myself, meaning to become humble and be willing to listen and follow God's word, to come to God wholeheartedly, heartedly, and honestly, and admit that I can't make it alone and I need his help. Also, there is something called the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Covenant means an agreement. In the Old Covenant, people would sacrifice animals for the blood. For the blood. The blood would represent the agreement between God and the Israelites. Turn to Exodus 24, verse 8. Okay, everyone there? Amen. Verse 8. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. This verse plainly states that this is the blood of the covenant, meaning agreement which the Lord made with the Israelites according to these words, meaning his commandments. In the new covenant, turn to Hebrew Chapter 9, verse 11 through 15. Amen. Yeah. No, chapter 9, 11 through 15. Everyone there? But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves. I repeat, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer Sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death. For the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. In the new covenant, we don't have to do this because Jesus died on the cross for us already. Now this is the part where I come in. I, I should sacrifice myself to God because he did it for us. So we should do the same. Become willing to die for the word of God and following his commandments. This scripture does not mean, I repeat, this scripture does not mean that I'm supposed to go out and find somebody's dog or cat because I don't know where no sheep and oxen are and burn them in the yard. All that's going to do is get me locked up. Don't add or take from the scriptures. If you don't understand, ask someone. Pause before you light the match. Let the dog go and ask someone. We are not, I repeat, we are not under the old covenant anymore. We are under the new covenant. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Amen. 
2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Okay, everyone there? Okay, verse 1. But there will also be false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covet covetedness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgments have not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. What these verses in the Bible mean is that in the world outside of the garden, there will be teachers of deceptive ways, basically meaning that they will spread lies. In verse 2, it states that many will follow their ways, meaning that this verse or verses in the Bible clearly explains what, or better yet, why a lot of things are happening in the world today, because most of the world is being led by the devil. It also states that their judgments have not been idle, meaning that this has been going on for a long, long time. It also states that their destruction does not slumber, meaning basically the devil never sleeps. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6, 12, to 12 through 13. Yeah, Ephesians 6, 12 and 13. Okay. Everyone there? Okay, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may, may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I read the armor, or we read the armor, on a daily basis. And the more I read and study the armor, I tend to, or better yet, God reveals more of its meaning to me. Let's focus on those two verses, 12 and 13. The first part of verse 12 states that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, meaning that we should turn to Exodus 14, chapter 14, verse 14, which states that God will fight our battles for us. We should hold our peace. Basically what that means is another human or another person or the things that we see, we choose not to fight against. We fight with the Bible. We fight with the scriptures. We fight with the prayer that we read every morning. Those are the things that we fight with. The second part of verse 12 starts with but, meaning every word after this is an exception against the principalities of the devil, against the powers of the devil, against the drugs which are of the devil, against the jealousies which are of the devil, against living in the flesh, flesh which is of the devil, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, which is the devil. And last but not left off, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, basically meaning false teachers. These things I have to be aware of and ask God to cover me with his arm, which is the Bible and make sure that I have 100% faith in God's instructions of the Bible, which, be, which will be my shield of faith. Yeah. So with a combination of my faith and help from God and modern day, God and our modern day Moses and Aaron, which is people like Pastor Seven and Pastor Chris, the devil will miss me with all the lies and the mess of this world today, which will be the fiery darts of the wicked one. Wicked one meaning the devil. Speaking of Pastor Chris, a couple of Sundays ago, he gave us a simple five-part outline that will help me to not only become a better Christian, but it will also strengthen my faith in God. But I also believe that it is a total guideline to help the new people at the garden come to God and also understand why what is going on. Ironically, they are in order. It is like the five steps to heaven. He gave us these five steps. I can't remember exactly which Sunday it was, but literally every week I sit up front. I'm not just sitting up there. I'm writing down everything everybody's saying. Turn to 1 Peter 2, verse 2 and 3. Amen. 1 Peter 2, verse 2 and 3. 
That's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Everybody there? Amen. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. What this basically means is that first off, I have to be willing to give this a chance. I would not be too quick. I must not be too quick to draw conclusions because the devil has been working in my life for many years. Now I'm probably not going to grasp things within a day or two. When a baby gets hungry, wait a minute. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Well, let's start that over. I must not be too quick to draw conclusions. The devil has been working in my life for many years now. I'm probably not going to grasp things within a day or two. When a baby gets hungry, he doesn't know what to do. So he or she cries out. When his mom gives him his bottle, he automatically realizes that this is the remedy he or she needs to satisfy that craving. This in itself is an all-out beginning of faith. The baby has the faith, as small as a mustard seed, that the food is the answer to his hunger. And if he still cries, he or she either needs to be burnt or taken to the doctor for a checkup. This is another act of faith. Faith that God will work through the doctors to tell you what is going on. Faith that the doctor's advice is correct and faithfully following his commandments so that both of you all can get some sleep. I had to approach the word of God the same way. I had to come to seven bridges, cry out for help in feeding that void of emptiness, depression, etc., and give God time to work through Charles, Russell, and also Pastor Seven to drop that Bible in my face and open it to this. Turn to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 through 6. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 through 6. Yeah, 5 and 6. Okay, everybody there? Okay, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is the shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words. I repeat, do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found alive. This I had to, once I accepted this, I had to practice patience. Then God sent a 12 year old by the name of Jamal. Then my percentage of faith meter went up to 100%. Amen. Number two, I will not be hungry if I'm full of other things. Turn to Matthew 6, verses 33 to 34. Yeah, Matthew six, Matthew six, verses thirty-three to thirty-four. Wait a minute. Okay. 33 and 34, everybody there? Amen. All right. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. I had to come to the point where I had to ask God to give me the strength to let everything go. My family, will I get a job when I leave here, etc. I also had to ask him, Whoa. to give me the strength to let go of Gazoo also, which is the devil. I found out later on. So now there is nothing there. Now it is a clear path so God can fill me with the Holy Spirit and learn, learn more about God. This is another reason why I have to stay out of the past. If I let it go, why I talk about it? For those that don't know, Gazoo is that little man that used to sit on my shoulder when I first got here. It was the sound of my own voice, the lump of pride in me that would not go away. But now that I have the choice to ask God for the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit, I don't have to listen to it anymore. I can listen for God's voice and follow it. Every time...
Every time I start to think crazy or the desire to sin bubbles up in my head when my, when my focus is not on reading, praying, and at times just saying God's name out loud. Thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done. I might can't quote it word for word, but I most definitely understand what it means. In the end, that's all I ever really want. Number three, only God can satisfy my hunger. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 through 8. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. Um, I have one question. May I please have that water? Thank you. Somebody put a ball of cotton in my mouth. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 through and 8. I know you're right there now. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and who hope, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and would not fear when heat comes. But its leaves will be green, and would not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. This verse in the Bible states that I shall trust in the Lord, meaning that I have 100% faith in his word, which is the Bible. I can't see him directly. So I have to believe in the Bible, which is like a complete book that he wrote for me to follow. It also states that my hope should be in the Lord. If my trust and hope is in the Lord 100%, how can I not grow? But I have to state this. It says, have trust and hope in the Lord. Nowhere in these scriptures does it say trust in a statue, a picture, a bird, a chicken, a rooster, or anything else. The second commandment states, that I should not worship any carved images. That means flying or crawling, three legs or four, barking or squawking. Do not add or take from the scriptures. I think we have established this before. But there is a catch to this. Due to the fact that God has given me the strength to stay here and learn more, I have begun to believe that God or the Holy Spirit talks to me through people. Let's look at it this way. I believe in my heart that God literally talks to us through Pastor Seth. I learned this totally through his actions. When I first got here, I would hear his words. Then I would sit back and not only hear him, I would watch his feet. Here is a man, after all us Israelite juniors have put him through, the lies, the petty complaints, day in and day out, he is still here. If he was operating on self or of the flesh, he would not be here. He would be on a beach or an island somewhere, sipping on a funny colored drink with an umbrella in it in a condo with the blinds closed, peeking out, and his only prayer would be that he hoped none of those Israelites are out there. <laughs> but it's the total opposite. This person gave me a total, I mean total, example of what the Holy Spirit does and is. Let's face it, he can't be operating on the flesh. He has got to be running on something else, and I choose to call it God and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Because due to Galatians 5, verses 16 through 26, that's all what's left. Flesh or the Holy Spirit is either one or the other. I have read that over and over and over again, and that's all I can find. Flesh or Holy Spirit. Talk about those who have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. This man's fleshly moves have not only been crucified, they have been burned to the ground. Number four. If I am hungry for the word of God, I cannot feed on junk. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. Yes, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. Everybody there? Okay. You ready? Okay. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. 
If anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with him. This verse states that I should not grow weary, meaning lose patience, or get defocused by not focusing on God at all times and doing good. And if anyone does not obey the word of God, meaning basically anyone who talks down all the time, stays in the past, or mainly focus on fleshly things or desires all the time, note that person, meaning keep an eye on him, so I cannot keep him in my company, meaning altogether, watch him or her, and when they start talking crazy, run for your life, and then pray for them, and ask God to watch over them because they don't know no better. Number five, I should practice a continuous habit of seeking God first in my life, meaning following the Bible and staying in prayer at all times. And if something happens, think of God first. That should be my first reaction. And what would God do? Trust me, there is a scripture for every situation in life. Turn to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Everybody is there. Okay. Everybody ready? Okay. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. And always acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. The Bible states that I should trust in the Lord with all my heart, meaning that whatever state of mind I am in, or circumstance, if I lean only on his understanding and what the Bible suggests, he will carry me through. Lean not on my own understanding, meaning that if I lean on what I believe and not on what God teaches us, I leave the door open for a fiery dark that is called discouragement. In all my ways, acknowledge him, meaning in this area, if I lean on God and what he is teaching me to do, there is no room for discouragement because it states that he would direct my path, meaning that he would take away the obstacles from my path, especially this obstacle called discouragement. But I will say this, thoughts are normal. Everyone has them, good and bad. I thought it was going to stop raining the other day, so I didn't wear my boots. It didn't stop, so my feet drowned. So what? But there's a difference between a thought and letting a thought set up camp in my head. When a thought sets up camp in my head, that means that my focus is on that thought, not on God anymore. When a thought sets up camp in my head, it will turn into a belief. This could be in my head for days, years, decades, and usually these thoughts will be negative because there is nothing positive in discouragement. Example, my father started telling me I had, to, I had one strike against me because I was black, so I had to try harder, garbage. The only strike I had against me are the ones I erected for myself by drinking and using drugs and knowing what a Bible was but never touching it. But today I have thoughts, but they just don't stay that long. Because today I trust in the Lord and keep my focus on him. Because if I feel discouraged, trust in the Lord. If I feel left out, trust in the Lord. If I feel like I'm do not doing enough, trust in the Lord. Amen. Another example. Amen. Here we go. Another example. I love Pastor to death, but I'm not running up them steps every five minutes. <laughs> Pastor, would you do this? Pastor, why didn't you do that? Pastor, why won't you put me in this position? Right. Won't, Pastor, why won't my hair grow back? That's Pastor, right. Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. That's I'm right. not doing it. I'm not doing it. I ain't doing it. Amen. Because this, this simply means Because this simply means that I'm losing faith or didn't have any in the first place, period. I'm acting just like them Israelites. You think pastor don't know this? Duh, he reads the Bible too. This is another reason why all my excitations is on faithfulness. Because not only do I need to read the Bible, I'm trying three, sometimes 10 times as hard to learn to apply them in my life. I only used one scripture to explain discouragement because, it could, because trusting in the Lord covers every dark bullet, arrow, spear, rock, break, discouragement, fear, insecurity, depression, 
or whatever my brain or your brain can come up with. As long as I do this, meaning action, trust in the Lord. Look at it this way. I have faith in my heart that this is the house God built. And I feel that it, it's, that it is totally anointed by God. And no matter what no one says, that's Moses sitting up there in that apartment. The only difference is he got shoes on. God has already told him he wants me to do what he wants me to do. Now my job is not to question it or whine about it and practice some obedience. Go on out there and count them peas and carrots and just make sure that I'm the best pea and carrot counter the God never had. Stay focused and if I get defocused, which I will at times because I'm human, get up, refocus, and get to step. In time, God will reveal to him more for me. Plus, it's the perfect place for me to practice the art of multitasking, which would be talking to God and trying to figure out where to put all that stuff. Sometimes I ask him that too, not Charles. I ask God, leave Charles alone too. I want to say this. I'm really bent on application because of the simple fact we're supposed to be soldiers for Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay. I haven't heard this word mentioned in a while, but it was in my second exhortation because I have every last one of these exhortations numbered, Amen. and I keep them, and they're sitting right here. Amen. In my second exhortation, we talked about integrity. In order for me to be a good soldier, yes. I practice a lot around here. I don't do a lot of talking to pastor. I speak and I go, yes. but I watch yes. and I listen and I write because my mind can't, can't hold too much no more. I, I gotta write it down. I can't remember. You tell me your name, I'd have forgot it two seconds later. <laughs> so I have to, if I'm gonna remember who you are, I got to write it down. So I write stuff down, but I watch everything. I watch people like, Randall, wherever he at. <laughs> there he is. There he is. I watch people like Randall. This is a man right here who is a prime example Amen. of humility. Amen. This man walked around here last summer. He walked around here last summer. This man had a push lawn mower, and he would stand out there and cut every drop of grass equaling up to three football fields. He didn't care if he had a pair of seals. But guess what? When he finished, I would watch his actions. Did he gripe? No. Did he complain? No. I'm waiting on the aftermath, not what he's doing. I'm waiting on the reaction. Because anybody can do anything. The reaction is what counts. There was no reaction. Steve, this man sits here, and he does all kind of question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't know what he do. But he will stop for a second. <laughs> He will stop for a second, yeah. and he will walk down here and ask me, hey, do you need something swept up? He will pick the broom up, and he will do it. And he will just, and then he'll go back to doing his question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> That's humility. I'm watching this. People like Charles. Charles been here I don't know how many years. <laughs> but guess what? Guess what? Out of all that, Charles will still get up on the back of that truck and help us unload that stuff. Charles don't have to do that if he don't want to. He choose to do that, humility. So at the same time, by me watching this, who am I to complain? I ain't been before, am I? So what I'm trying to do is like Pastor said a couple of weeks ago, I'm trying to soar with the eagles. Those are eagles. They're all eagles. Look at Craig. Craig can get up on a nine-story ladder and hop around, hop around, he ain't got to get off the ladder. He hops around on the ladder and paints. After he done got out of the hospital with this, I don't even want to say what he went through. Does his attitude change? Does his disposition change? Is he crying? Is he whining? If he is, he's doing a good job of it because I'm watching it. I'm watching everything that moves. I'm not talking, but I am looking because I'm trying to learn how to apply. And today, that's what I'm trying to do. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. That was my excitation.
Now I'm going to bless the food, and then I'm going to sit down. Okay. Lord Jesus, thank you for the guidance that you bestowed upon me, and thank you for the guidance that you bestowed upon everybody else. Thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you for all the wonderful examples that you bestowed upon me to follow. Thank you for everything that you do for me. Because Lord Jesus, usually I'm in jail right about now. And this is probably the first Christmas season that I've had outside of an institution in over 10 years. So I thank you for that. I might not talk a lot. I thank you for my ears. Thank you for this wonderful food that you bless for us. Thank you for all the donations that we received. Thank you for all them bikes we had to move down there on the side of that hygiene room. Thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.